Hello friends, in this session we'll be discussing a very important topic which is dependency preserving check which is always applied after performing normalization. That is after performing each and every level of normalization we always perform two important checks. First one is a lossless decomposition, checking whether the decomposition was lossless or not and second is checking whether the decomposition is dependency preserving or not. The lossless decomposition has always uh, has already been catered in the previous video. You can watch that previous video for that concept. And in this session, we will be dealing with the dependency preserving check. So, let's first of all read the definition. What is it? it? Uh, what is that it states? It states that functional dependencies for a relational schema R are said to be preserved after a decomposition into some sub-relational schemas R1 and R2 if we are able to obtain all the functional dependencies as were present in initially from these sub-relational schemas. What it means to say is, if I had, let's say, three functional dependencies, some particular three functional dependencies in beginning represented as a set capital F, before the decomposition, then I should be able to obtain all those specific three functional dependencies after the decomposition as well. If in case I am able to get those functional dependencies, the same functional dependencies, I would say it is a dependency preserving decomposition, otherwise it is not. Let's see this with the help of an example. We have this example over here. So, in this example, we have the relational schema A, B, C, D, E, functional dependency set represented by F and decomposition set represented with this. So, as you can see, we have three decompositional sub-relations. We can name, name them as R1, R2, R3. Now, another thing we notice over here is there is a different type of functional dependency which is AB goes to CD. So this is basically a combination of two functional dependencies and it can be split by using the splitting property and it can be written as AB goes to C and AB goes to D. So now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check that what are the functional dependencies that I'm able to derive from these relational schemas and what are that functional dependencies that should be present in this F. So, first of all, I'm going to check that AB goes to C. Whether I'm able to derive this AB goes to C from any of the dependency sub-relations present over here or not. So, I can see the first relational sub-schema R1. From R1, I can easily derive this AB goes to C. So, I'm going to write AB goes to C over here. Next is AB goes to D. I, I cannot determine this AB goes to D from here, right, because D is not present over here. So, I'm going to move to the next one. Next is C goes to D. That I can derive from this R2. So, I'm going to list C goes to D over here. Now, also another thing which I can infer is by using the combination of these two functional dependencies, I can derive this AB goes to D by transitivity. So, I'm also able to obtain this functional dependencies. So, uh, till here, we are able to derive this and this. Next is D goes to E. I can derive this D goes to E very simply from this R3. That means I am also able to get this. So, with this, I am able to get all the functional dependencies which were present initially in this capital F set. Hence, this dependency preserving. The, it is dependency preserving or I would say the T composition is dependency preserving. So, next we move, move on to the next example. The next example says that there is a relational schema which is R, A, B, C, D, E, G and in this relational schema we have this a big functional dependency set and a decomposition set, right? Again the procedure is same. So I am going to start with the first functional dependency which is A, B goes to C. From the first sub-relation R1, I am able to get this A, B goes to C. So I have written A, B goes to C over here. Moving on to next, AC goes to B. Again, I can derive this as AC goes to B from here. So, I have listed AC goes to B over here. AD goes to E? No. D is not present here. So, we will try obtaining this from the next sub-relation R2. So, over here, we have both A, D, E, all the attributes present over here. So, AD goes to E is derivable from here. Now, we see B goes to D? No. B and D are never present in any sub-relation. Uh, yeah, in any sub-relational schema R1, R2, R3. 
So I'm not able to get this. B goes to D as per now. Then BC goes to A. Yes, I can obtain this from R1. So I've left it. BC goes to A over here. E goes to G. Again, E and G are never present in any of these subrelations. So I'm not able to obtain these two functional dependencies from any possible combination. Right. So that means this example is of a non-dependency preserving decomposition. So this was all how to check a dependency preserving decomposition and I hope the session would have been proved to be an informative one to you. In case you like the video, please like the video and subscribe for more upcoming videos. Thank you friends.